Welcome everyone, I'm Amanda Lam from Proud Designs, a local Ainsbury florist, and I'm here today with the Melton City Council with the Directory Learning Facebook page where you can actually watch a series of my videos online on how to make flowers, terrariums, all sorts of stuff, which is really exciting. So today we're gonna to make a terrarium. Um, so depending what bowl you have, so we're trying to give you ideas of things that you can make from home, because we're all still a little bit in isolation. I've grabbed a bowl, this one's quite easy because you could use a, a salad bowl, um, something maybe you used to make trifles in or something that was given to you for a wedding present, which I quite often do. A lot of people say, man, can you make me a terrarium? I've got this bowl. So we're gonna make in this one today. Normally I like to do my terrariums in something with a little bit deep so we can build inside. But during, for the video, I think we'll do with this one because it's a little bit easy to show you what's happening inside. And this is something that most people have inside in their cupboard. So what we're gonna start off with is we, a series of succulents. So whether you can raid your family and friends gardens because most people have succulents in their garden funny enough um, otherwise you can go to Bunnings and buy these little cuttings and little bits and pieces a lot of local florists will sell small plants as well um, and then obviously your dirt your plants your rocks and we're ready to go for your bits and pieces so just get all your prep ready so for stars we've got the bowl um, because we're using such a big bowl I like to put a little bit of rocks in the base um, one it's a slight little drainage but we don't want to put too much rocks in the base I prefer to just use more majority of dirt because then the plants can fill and really work their way around and sometimes if you've got too many rocks at the base you can tend to get a bit of a water log and then mold and moss and things can build up the bottom look quite ugly so maybe just for decoration purposes it's always good just to put a few rocks around the base now ideally we'd have a lot to fill the whole jar but we'll just show you the front view and just sort of prop them up a little bit so you can actually see them from the front of the the vase but we'd go all the way around because this would be look really good on a dining table so we get it so it's a full view 360 all the way around so you have your rocks in the base uh, and then we just got some beautiful fresh potty mix that you can get from Bunnings about 10 11 dollars a bag um, and all these little rocks that you can buy that you see that I'm using today again Bunnings uh, reject shop I think I even seen something came out the other day um, so again just filling your bowl so we're not going to fill the bowl all the way up so normally about half full. So even if we were doing this one, I'd go about not quite half full. So depending on the height of your vase. Now Kmart have some great vaseware at the moment that's really cheap, which is cheaper than I can buy from most suppliers. So if you want to have a, a, a bit of a go at a terrarium, you don't have anything in the cupboard at home to use, um, get down to Kmart and grab a couple of you know vases, which range from about $2 up. So then we fill our potty mix all the way up. So we've got a nice fill like that and you can still see the rocks from the base. Um, another thing is moss is quite good. So you can get a fresh, fresh moss from most floral suppliers. Um, also you can get this fake green moss which you can get in cheap shops you can also order online which stays green all year round so it's a dried sprayed moss which looks quite nice and you can push that down sometimes through the vase to create a little bit of a layer system of moss, rocks and dirt. And then obviously you have the pops of color up the top. So this is sort of how I first probably base my base up first. So your dirt, some fresh moss. Some people are lucky enough, um, especially out in Ainsbury, there's lots of moss growing in people's yards at the moment because of the cold weather's kicked in quite early. So you can take out the fresh moss in your garden, place that in the dirt and that will quite easily live and kick on in there. So then we have our variety of plants. So you can even do this with different varieties of cactus as well. I don't like to deal much with cactus because they're a bit prickly for me. So I tend to go with succulents. So you tend to find a plant that's quite a good height that can come up through the middle and then you can base your succulents around the, the base. So I'm gonna start off with this little fern. Now I have a special supplier that I get all my plants from, but if you're working from home, you don't have access to these guys, which are out in the Dandenong way, is just these were actually in coals. I think they were $12. So again, if it's a little bit high, you can sort of break a bit of the base off. Um, it's okay in a deeper one because this is quite shallow. And then I place the base of the plant. So if you're having it front facing, if you're having it on a hall table or something that has a wall behind it, well then you probably put that plant a bit forward back and have it. But because I'm gonna have this on a dining table, we want it sort of to look good all the way around. So this will be my middle feature plant that'll come up through there. And again, just place that in the dirt, squash that down. And there's our base little plant to start off with. 
So again, um, different succulents, I like different colours, depending on the time of the year and when you're going to make your terrarium, succulents will vary. So you'll have bigger variety at certain times. So these are the ones that I got a hold of um, out of a beautiful friend, Erin, her garden here in Melton. So she grows all these, which is amazing. And then she cultivates them. So she's given me these for today. Um, so again, most succulents you can cut and they will reshoot um, roots so they'll develop into the bowl. So don't feel that if you cut it that it's not going to grow, they'll all just go in. You don't need a Pacific potty mix as well. You can get one that's for succulents and cactuses, um, but you can just use dirt out of your backyard too. If you've got a veggie patch out the backyard, you can just use dirt out of there as well. It all works really well. And then we just start to feature our plants around the base. So if you can see that, okay. Um, you could do clusters. Um, of the one plant in one section or you can mix them all up. I sort of like little clusters So if I had a couple of those I would pl place a couple all around. I've got a couple of guys in here This one's quite cute because it looks like a coral or a seaweed um, So again, just making a little bit of hole with your hands poking that in and then just tucking that around like that. So keeping in mind these are going to grow. So the bigger the bowl, the bigger they're going to grow. So this will come up at fair height. So sometimes when you make a terrarium, leave a bit of space for your things to grow. I'm sort of the opposite and I like to jam pack my terrariums up full from the start. Um, but each to your own. So if, depending on the budget and what sort of money you've got to spend. Um, this little guy, we can put him in down the side. And sometimes you can put them on an angle or position the dirt so you've got like a little bit of... Um, variance in height but this one I'm going to go all the same so again we've got a few of these these are beautiful and I can't tell you unfortunately a lot of the names of these succulents I'm not a real good horticultural but if you can find whatever succulents you can get in the garden they all go quite well and again just layering them through and around each other some go really well and then others don't um, but yeah normally they're pretty um, pretty easy to work with and they're pretty hardy um, and you'd be unlucky to kill one of these guys. So again, just layering the colours. And at the moment, the colours with succulents are great. So you're getting your purples, your greens, your pinks. Um, so it gives you a bit of variety. And some you can have that are on a nice hardy stick. So you can stick some up a little bit higher through some of the other plants. So you're getting a little bit, bit like when you're doing flowers and you can build and poke things in. So these guys are really hardy too. So again, just poking them up getting a little bit of a feature up around other flowers. Uh, these guys are really cute. They're called jelly beans because they actually look like little jelly beans. So that's going to give you a nice little pop of colour. So I just cut them off low because they will reshoot the ones that you've cut. And then we just poke in these little coloured ones around the big ones. Again, I tend to work in clusters of three um, or just odd numbers and not so much even. Let me just pop those through there. So giving you an idea of where we're at with our terrarium so far. So again, we can just bring, introduce some more moss now if you like, and just in around the base of the plants, just filling up all the gaps with lots of moss. So it's giving you those pops of color and it takes it away from so much dirt. So again, if we're coming around the back, just lots of moss and building it up. It keeps the plants nice and moist when you spray them. Um, and a little bit around the base here. Helps position your plants in as well and then I've just got these other little rocks that again you can get from Bunnings and they're just like a little coloured variety of rocks so these are nice just to do as a little feature which you can pop in around the front you can wedge them down the side of the glass so you can see a little bit of a layer of rocks there so I just like to place these ones on top because they're all different colours and they just add a, a little bit of fun to your terrarium which you can see down the base there so using lots of different rocks then you've got just to, your bigger pebbles, which sometimes you can get those out of the garden. You can find them everywhere and anywhere. And these are quite nice just to add to your terrarium, and whether you can just place them sitting upright. So if we come around the back, I'm not really filling up that back bit as yet, um, to place some big rocks down low, you can sort of wedge it down the side of the glass. So it gives you a bit of a feature as well. And again, I like to sit them up and do like a little bit of a rockery. So we've got a couple more of these and it's nice just to wedge the plants in amongst the rocks. So you just sort of have a play with it to um, how you want to design your terrarium and how you want it to look. And again, so just taking off these little base ones so you've got a little bit of a plain stem and you're just wedging those down. And they will all grow roots and develop 
into nice little plants. And then they'll shoot off other ones as well that you can add. Um, again, we've got some of this lovely sand, um, which I love to use in the terrariums as well. Like it looks good in the bottom and also if we come back around this side. So again, you can place it and just wedge it down so it falls down amongst the dirt. And then again, just place it all around the top so it looks like a little beach oasis around the top. And place that down there. So that's pretty, they're pretty easy to make guys. Um, if you've never had a, a go at making one, please do, you'll just love it. And then you're just watching it grow. Um, so that's pretty much the basics. You're adding different pebbles, fresh moss, your different plants. So you base them to get to where you want to go. Obviously your different rocks that you can get. As I said, bunnings are great for all that sort of stuff. Um, again, making them at home and getting the kids involved because my kids love making terrariums. They have one each in their bedroom. My daughter has a fairy one. So you can buy all these little fairies and things that you can place in there. You can put little bits of glitter and coloured rocks in blues and pinks. Um, and then you've got animals that you can buy. So I've got like little different animals that you can place and do like a little bit of a an animal scene with different things in there, which I love, these are probably my favourite. At Easter time, I decorate them in an Easter theme, so they'll have all rabbits and little Easter eggs and things through there. Um, then you've even just got little bits of bark that you can just pick up out of the garden or falling along in a park, and you can place those in your terrariums as well and push down for a little bit of a feature. So I'll just give you a bit of an idea and a, a look at where we're at in the inside so far. Um, and then yeah, just decorating it with different things. Some people like birds, so when I make terrariums, because I do quite a lot of terrariums, we get lots of orders through Proud Designs. Um, I'll ask them if they want a theme, do they like animals? Um, do they want fairies? Do they want birds? But just give you an idea how you can, and these are cute, they're just from the little toy shop, came out sell the little animals as well. And you can dig them in there and just create a little bit of a, a story, I guess. So that's the basic behind a terrarium. And then just all I do is once a week with a spray bottle is just give it a spray. And that's all. So don't tip any water in there because um, it will become waterlogged and that's why a lot of people tend to lose their terrarium. So just once a week with a spray. Um, being an indoor thing, you've got to keep in mind they do still like a little bit of sunlight even though they're in indoor plants or outdoor plants. So I always suggest once a week is take it outside or put it near a window so it gets some natural light. But otherwise, there's your terrarium and you can make something if you've got your own glassware, something like that you can make for under $20. So, and it's a bit of fun as well. Okay, everyone, thank you for watching um, my video today on how to make a terrarium from home. Um, and again, just jump onto the Melton City Council Learning Directory, their Facebook page. You'll see these through YouTube. So there's lots of tutorials on how to make flowers, terrariums, and some lovely cooking videos as well but there's lots of things so um, yeah thank you for the Melton City Council for having me today and I'd love to see all your creations and your terrariums that you make at home so please post on my uh, Proud Design site and send me some inboxes thank you